सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक हेल्थ एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन द टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर वन हेल्थ एंड डिजीजेज वन पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट टू प्रिवेंशन एंड क्योर इन इंडिया नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेज कॉज मेजर हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम्स दीज डिजीजेज कॉज डिसेबिलिटी लॉस ऑफ इनकम डिसरप्शन इन फैमिली एनवायरमेंट and poor quality of life in the most productive years we are going to have the highest incidence of diabetes in the world by 2020 page number 7 you may have heard about young people having heart attacks and requiring bypass surgery we need medical help for treatment however efforts should be made to prevent them we can prevent these if we adopt a healthy lifestyle right from childhood and continue it throughout life non communicable diseases can be prevented in the following ways healthy diet eating a balanced diet helps in the prevention of obesity and other lifestyle diseases the balanced diet includes fruits and vegetables preferably locally available and seasonal whole grain products including pulses milk and milk products adequate sleep we all require daily 6 to 8 hours of sound sleep inadequate sleep leads to changes in blood pressure increase in stress level and disturbance of what is called the biological clock regular exercise people who undertake physical exercise and yoga activities daily keep themselves physically fit feel happy and do not put on excess weight one must do 20 to 30 minutes of physical activity daily to keep fit this can be done by taking part in sports exercising or spot jogging can be done at home simple walking climbing stairs not using the lift and skipping have the same effect gym is another dedicated place for workouts figure 1.2 healthy diet in this figure we have an image which shows several vegetables which make a healthy diet for example cabbage pumpkin eggplant radish potatoes spinach and turnip figure 1.3 regular exercises in this figure we have four images in these images a girl is shown doing free hand push ups page number 8 we have an activity for you activity number 1.6 Recall the physical activities done by you in the last week and prepare a brief note on the following. Do you play any game regularly? If yes, for how long? How often does your school organize physical activities, yoga during the week? Box 1.2. Do you know there should be no tobacco shop within 100 yards of an educational institution? Sale and purchase of tobacco related items like cigarette good cars by minors and to anyone below the age of 18 is prohibited now continuing with the chapter mental relaxation if a person is not able to handle stress he or she experiences anxiety and depression this weakens the immune system and one falls sick very often one can also experience psychosomatic symptoms like headache body ache stomach ache fatigue inability to concentrate and loss of interest in all activities meditation relaxation exercises and other yoga activities help reduce stress you can also engage in hobbies like drawing painting listening to music and so on as relaxation techniques when under any type of stress all these have positive impact that reduce anxiety and depression and prevent diabetes hypertension and heart attacks in the long run avoiding the use of tobacco alcohol and drugs use of tobacco both by way of smoking and consuming chewable tobacco in any form directly contributes to heart disease stroke chronic lung disease and common cancers even the non smokers inhale the smoke released by smokers around them therefore Prohibition of smoking in public places is an example of a public health regulation that decreases the risk for non-smokers. 
you should request the smokers not to smoke in public places. You may avoid company of smokers. Alcohol use contributes to chronic liver disease, depression and injuries, especially motor vehicular injuries. Both alcohol and drugs can have long-term effects not only on the physical health but also on the mental health. Excess stimulants like caffeine in tea, coffee and cola drinks also have a harmful effect on our body as they cause rapid increase in heartbeat rate, lack of sleep and elevated blood pressure. These may also cause acidity and stomach ulcers. Addictive drugs impair social and occupational functioning and are associated with impaired mental health. Antioxidants Antioxidants help in prevention of the damage, repair of cellular functions and delay in the aging process. Fresh vegetables, fruits and dry fruits are rich sources of antioxidants. Use of Ayurvedic, homeopathy and Unani medicine also help in the cures of non-communicable diseases. Ayurved is the science of life and health, developed in India since ages. It lays emphasis on prevention and promotion of health in addition to curing the diseases. The treatment under Ayurved can be successfully used in early stages of diabetes, liver disorders, skin diseases, stress, insomnia, sleeplessness and anorectal diseases. Some specialized Ayurvedic treatments can be helpful in diseases like joint pains, neuromuscular diseases and paralysis. Activity 1.7 Is there a shop which sells tobacco products near your school? Have you observed any student purchasing pan masala, gutkha, khani or cigarettes? Discuss with your teacher what steps can be taken to address this issue. Page number 9 Both homeopathy and Unani systems of medicine are also used in the treatment of non-communicable diseases. Homeopathy is that system of medicine which is based on the nature's law of cure. It is a safe and effective method of treatment. It helps in increasing the immunity of the body and offers many cases a long-lasting cure. Unani system of medicine is also the natural way of treatment with the help of herbal medicines. According to this system, the health of a person depends on the balance of four elements in the body. These are dam, blood, bulgam, phlegm, safra, yellow bile and sanda, black bile. The Unani medicines are given to the person suffering from a disease to promote an equilibrium of these elements in the body. Box number 1.3 Do you know, one should not administer self-medication. We must always consult the doctor before taking any medication. 1.5 Reproductive Health You have read in your previous classes that cell is the structural and functional unit of our body. To perform various specialized functions, nature has divided our body into many functional units or systems comprising different organs. One such system is the reproductive system. It is made up of reproductive and genital organs. You will study more about the structure and functions of the reproductive system in your science classes. In this chapter, you will learn about the need to keep it healthy. In fact, reproductive health refers to healthy reproductive organs performing normal functions. But there are diseases that adversely affect this system. These are as follows. 1.5.1 Reproductive tract infections, RTIs and sexually transmitted infections, STIs. Reproductive tract infections, RTIs and sexually transmitted infections, STIs are non-communicable diseases which affect the quality of life and have important bearing on the reproductive functions. RTIs are infections involving reproductive organs. These can be caused by various microbes like bacteria, viruses or protozoa. Improper maintenance of hygiene of the genital organs or through infected instruments used in medical procedures for treating genital organs also result in reproductive tract infections. STIs are infections which are transmitted through 
close physical and sexual contact between individuals. However, STIs like infections through human immunodeficiency virus HIV and hepatitis B and C can also spread by non-sexual modes like sharing of needles, transfusion of infected blood and using infected equipment for surgery. Page number 10 Signs and Symptoms of RTIs and STIs Itching or burning sensation in the genital organs Foul-smelling discharge from vagina or penis Blisters, sores or swelling on or near genitals, anus or its mouth Pain, burning sensation and increased frequency of urine There may be one or more of the above symptoms Prevention and control of RTIs and STIs RTIs and STIs not only lead to poor quality of life, these can also lead to complications. Proper genital hygiene should be maintained to prevent RTIs. In girls and women, during menstruation, there are more chances of getting infection because of the flow of blood. Hence, adequate precautions with regard to hygiene need to be followed. One should have daily bath and clean the genital area with soap and water and stay away from casual sexual relationships and have responsible sexual behavior. If sexual relation cannot be avoided, a condom must be used. In case of problem, treatment from a qualified doctor should be taken and one should avoid going to quacks for treatment. One should not feel shy to discuss the problem with the doctor. Complete and proper treatment of both the partners is necessary in the case of RTIs and STIs. Menstrual Hygiene The following steps must be taken by women and girls for maintaining menstrual hygiene. Use clean homemade or disposable pads or napkins during menstruation. Change the sanitary pads at frequent intervals, at least twice a day. If homemade cloth napkins are reused, they should be washed daily with soap and water and dried in a sunny and dry place to prevent infection. 1.6 HIV and AIDS HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It is a virus which is found only in human beings and affects the immune system in humans. When the HIV remains in the body for a long time, it destroys the immune system. Many diseases like tuberculosis, fungal infections and cancer begin affecting the body and the person is said to be having AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. However, any person suffering from TB, cancer or fungal infection should not be considered suffering from HIV and AIDS. Page number 11 Acquired means it is not genetically inherited. Immune deficiency means that the defense mechanism of the body, the immune system becomes weak and syndrome means that when the individual has AIDS, it is not just the signs and symptoms of one disease but a group of diseases that appear in him or her. When a person is said to be HIV positive, it simply means that HIV is present in his or her body. The interval between acquiring HIV infection and AIDS may be up to 10 to 15 years. It depends upon many factors like the status of the immune system at the time of entry of HIV in the body, regular treatment of illnesses, good diet and healthy lifestyle that the individual has. 1.6.1 HIV Transmission HIV is transmitted through A. Having unsafe sexual contact with an HIV infected person. This is the most common route of transmission. B. HIV infected mother to her newborn child. C. Transfusion of HIV infected blood. And D. Sharing of needles and syringes with a person infected with HIV. This is most common in people who are habituated to intravenous drug use. HIV does not spread through air, water or food. Transmission of HIV also does not occur through mosquito or animal bites because the virus does not survive or reproduce outside the human body. When the mosquito bites, 
it sucks blood from human body and does not inject into it. Therefore, even if a mosquito bites a person immediately after biting an HIV infected person, it does not inject the infected blood into his or her body. Because of these myths and misconceptions, a lot of HIV infected persons, especially women, are abandoned and rejected by their respective families and are discriminated by the society. Figure 1.4 How HIV weakens the immune system. In this figure, it is shown with the help of different images how HIV weakens the immune system of human beings. At any given point of time, our immune system is at guard against disease. Then, white blood cells kill the germs that attack our body. In the third step or stage, HIV attacks our immune system by entering our white blood cells. Moving on further to the next stage, stage 4, HIV stops our immune system from being able to protect our body. Then, in the next step, step 5 or stage 5, once HIV has weakened our immune system, germs can take over our body and we become sick. HIV can enter our body through sexual intercourse without a condom with an infected partner, use of unsterilized needles or syringes infected with HIV. An infected mother may pass it on to her child before, during or after birth. Transmission of blood infected with HIV Box 1.4 The first case of AIDS was reported in 1981. Since then, it has killed more than 25 million people. India is having the second largest number of HIV infected persons and around half of all the new cases are occurring in young people. Prevention is the best strategy to protect oneself from HIV and AIDS. Page number 12 We have an activity for you now. Activity number 1.8 Prepare a list of myths and misconceptions regarding HIV and AIDS and discuss with other students. Now continuing with the chapter. These myths and misconceptions have no scientific basis and need to be removed by discussing these with the people and spreading awareness about HIV and AIDS. This will prevent discrimination against HIV positive people and help them live longer. 1.6.2 Detection of HIV and AIDS HIV infection can only be diagnosed by a specific blood test done at the integrated counselling and testing centres in government-run hospitals. Now, we have another activity for you. Activity number 1.9 Read the following two case studies and discuss with your classmates the questions given at the end of each case study. Situation number 1 Mahesh and Ratan, both 15 years old, have been friends with a group of boys in their neighborhood for the last five years. Their friends pressurize them into taking drugs, including drugs through injection. Both refuse, but when their friends begin to make fun of them, Mahesh, out of peer pressure and fear, experiments with injectable drugs. He does not want to be the odd one in his group. He uses the same needle that the other boys use. Soon, he is addicted to injectable drugs. Ratan, on the other hand, decides to leave the company of the friends. He even advises and pesters them to go to the doctor for help in giving up drug abuse. Number 1. What was the role of Mahesh's so-called friends in influencing his decision? Number 2. Could Mahesh have behaved differently? If yes, explain what could he have done. Do you know any drug de addiction center near your locality? Take the help of your teacher and make a list of de addiction centers. Put these on the notice board of your school. Enact this case study. Think what would you have done if you were Ratan. Now, situation number two. A daughter of a very senior company personnel was expelled from the school because her parents were detected HIV positive. The school principal felt that the parents did not observe moral behavior which led them to be HIV positive. The administration believed that the incident would have a negative impact on the school environment and therefore 
their child should not be allowed to study in the school. However, as per the medical reports of the mother, blood transfusion during an operation was the cause of acquisition of HIV by the mother. Now, number one, is the action taken by the principal of the school justified? Have a discussion in the class with your classmates regarding possible ways of acquiring HIV and AIDS. In this case, what would you like to do so that the girl should continue to study in the school? Number two, even if the HIV infection would have taken place otherwise and even the daughter would have been HIV positive, was the action justified? Page number 13. Now, continuing with the chapter. These centers maintain complete privacy and confidentiality. The test detects antibodies produced in the body against HIV. As the HIV antibodies appear only after 6 weeks to 6 months after acquisition of infection, the test will be negative if it is done during this period. This period of time is referred to as the window period. Thus, one should wait for the window period to be over to get the test done. Although there is no definite one set of symptoms of AIDS, when an HIV positive person develops AIDS, he or she has one or more of the following symptoms like weight loss greater than 10% of body weight, fever and or diarrhea for a period longer than one month and persistent severe fatigue. However, one should also understand that these signs and symptoms can be of any other disease. Once a person is diagnosed with HIV infection, he or she needs to be treated urgently in a well-equipped hospital. 1.6.3 Risk Factors for Acquiring HIV The activities which are of high risk for acquiring HIV infection are A. Having unprotected sex, that is without using condom, even if one know the person well. B. Having many sexual partners. C. Sharing syringes or needles while injecting drugs. D. Blood transfusion with blood that is not certified as HIV free. E. Ear piercing, acupuncture, etc. The instruments used for these procedures must be sterilized before use. 1.6.4 Responsible sexual behavior to prevent HIV and AIDS. While sexual route is the most common in transmitting HIV as stated earlier, it is very alarming to note that more than 50% new cases are occurring in India among the adolescents and youth. During the process of growing up, important physical, physiological, psychological and social developments take place among adolescents. These are attracted towards opposite sex or same sex do experiments and are curious about many such feelings. They act under peer pressure very often, which sometimes is the driving force behind unsafe experiments like drug abuse or unsafe sex. We must always remember that along with rights, we also have certain responsibilities. Irresponsible sexual behavior causes harm to self and others. A knowledge-based choice and decision towards Sexual behavior can prevent many future complications, including emotional turmoil, unwanted pregnancy, and diseases like STIs, HIV, and AIDS. Thus, adopting a responsible sexual behavior go a long way in protecting oneself from the menace of HIV and facilitate to live a healthy, happy, and a productive life. It is equally important to avoid drug abuse especially through needle sharing. Page number 14 Assessment Answer the following questions. Question number 1 How can we prevent indirect transmission of communicable diseases? Question number 2 What steps are required at the individual and society level to prevent communicable diseases? Question number 3 List major risk factors for non-communicable diseases. A, B, C, D, E. Question number 4. 
why are young people suffering from heart diseases nowadays give reasons can you suggest some ways to prevent these question number 5 the obesity among children and adolescents is becoming a major cause of concern for the parents and health personnel what can be done to prevent overweight and obesity question number 6 Why are adolescents more vulnerable to HIV infection? Give reasons. Question number 7. List some ways in which you can manage your anxiety and stress. Question number 8. Why do you need to make exercises an integral part of your lifestyle? How can you do it? Page number 15. Prepare a table as shown below showing communicable diseases. ways of it is transmission and its prevention and control now the table has to have four columns the first one is serial number second name of the communicable disease the next column ways of transmission and then prevention and control fill in your answers in the columns given below question number 10 prepare two slogans each for generating awareness about prevention of hiv among your peer group and community you were just listening to this audiobook narrator neeraj yado technical coordinator bati langlingdo sound recordists shanu mukseem vikas sangwan and mayank kumar directed and produced by vimlesh choudhury this audiobook is presented to you by ciet and cert new delhi india you were just listening to this audiobook narrator neeraj yado technical coordinator bati langlingdo sound recordist shanu mukseem assistants in production ruchi sharma directed and produced by vimlesh choudhury this audio book is presented to you by ciet and cert new delhi india